Rightio, I am Super Mario Sonic Lover. Scrappyfan92. And uh, welcome everyone to Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage or Gateway to Glimmer if you're from Europe, which I am, but the, PS the PSN version uses Ripto's Rage, so that's the title we're going to go with. And yeah, it's been a while since I've done the first game on this channel, but considering that Reignited Trilogy is coming out this year in September, for us, it's pretty much time for me to do the rest of the trilogy. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. Yeah, this game has more of a actual story going on with, um, like, a main cast of characters. Oh, I love the harp. <laughs> Yep. Alright. Hi, Spyro! Welcome to Glimmer! Unfortunately for us, a mob of lizards just showed up and started stealing all of our gems. Can you stop them? Yeah, so, um... Yeah, we went to Avalar, we're in a different world from the first game, which was, like, based in the Dragon Realms. And, um, I think Avalar is generally a lot more interesting as a world. Um, there's... People in it for one. Yeah, there's a lot of dialogue, the, um, there's a bunch of characters you talk to, um, and there's generally a lot more personality than the first game. Um, and again, like, there's actual main, there's a main cast of characters with Hunter, and, um, who's her face? Alora. Alora. Alora, yeah. Um, Hunter's a mainstay in the series, uh, at this point. Um, and you have the Professor, Ripto, which... 
Um, I like his personal personality, and um, he and Spyro have a very good chemistry. But as we'll get through, go through the game here. As a villain, he kind of falls flat for me, and we'll I'll get more into that as we play the game. But you know, as a character, I do I do enjoy his. Uh, I, I do enjoy him, and um, he's, a, he's a lot of fun. You forgot to mention everyone's favorite character, Harry. Uh, oh, well, first off, I need to change the uh, thing to active. Um, if I know who you're talking about, we'll get to that um, in later down this level. That lovable, lovable person. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're actually starting off in a regular level, unlike the first game, which is kind of interesting. We don't see the first hub area until after this. But, um... Yeah, the, the aim of the game is still basically the same. Go around the world, collect the gems. Um, but it has... Um, some added features, I guess you could say. Uh, like there's um, mini games to get orbs. Um, and you have to play every stage to get the level's talismans, and you need all, all those in a world to get to the boss. So it was really quiet, I don't know why. Zoe. But yeah, uh, Scrappy said here as well. So um, this is gonna be quite a quite a long ride because Spyro two and three are really long games. Well, not really long, but like for what we usually do, they're pretty long, especially compared to some of the fighters. So yep. Once again, the gems are the most high-quality graphics from this game. Yeah, it's and just like the first game, they're really, they they feel really good to pick up. I think every type of gem has a different type of cut to it, unlike the first game. I could be wrong, but it's a nice little detail. Yeah, that's another thing about this game, which I'll talk about in a minute. Ah, you must be the dragon everyone is talking about. Well, dragon or not, I'm afraid there is a small fee to open the bridge. It will cost you 100 of your gems, of course. Thank you, Mr. Dragon. Spyro, was it? You can now use the bridge whenever you want, free of charge. I hope we meet again when you have even more gems. Yep. <laughs> Everyone's favorite character. <laughs> uh, I, I like that they. Oh, okay. Hi. I think that's just telling you to. Yeah, it's like. Zoom in camera view. But, um. Yeah, I like that Insomniac made fun of the idea of a paywall and made that an actual, like, character. That you just love to hate. Yeah, we'll be seeing a lot of money bags as we go, go through her. Twitchy. Yeah. Yep, not gonna do that just yet. Um, but yeah, this is obviously 100% playthrough, so we can try and get everything we can here right now. But uh, what was your what was your first experience with this game? Um, played it in 2011 at a friend's house. Then I purchased it myself <laughs> a year later. Yeah. This was a spiral game that. Of the original 
obviously of the four classic ones. I'm kind of interested in Dragonfly because it still kind of feels like the old ones. Yeah. Um, of the four classics, it's this is the one I actually played the last. Okay. My order was. Well, technically, I played Spyro one the last, unless I actually did play it with my friend. Yeah. Played at my friend's house. I may have just watched him play, but if I did, then it would be Spyro Year of the, Dra- Year of the Dragon, Spyro one, Enter the Dragonfly, then this. Okay. I um, I didn't actually play the f- the original trilogy until much later. Um, well, technically speaking, because um, I like Crash Three was one of the first uh, games I played. Like not even not even just on the PS1, but just in general. And I played the Spyro one demo on that, and I really wanted to play the games, but we could just never find them anywhere. Uh, so uh, the first real game Spyro game I played, unfortunately, was Into the Dragonfly, um, and I didn't get to play the original trilogy until pfft, I don't know, like 2015 on the PS3. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's actually no. Let's do let's do this one first, because this is because that one that mission requires us to just go to the back end of beginning of the level. Are they gerbils? I think so. Yeah. So I don't think these were in Spyro One, but like. Yeah, you have like little gates in the levels that give you certain abilities, like like super flight and super flame and stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not entirely the biggest fan of how you activate them. But you know. Yeah, orbs, the main collectibles. Uh, there's like three or so in each level, I believe, so. Yeah, I just have to kill these guys. Wonder if I can go up there. Oh yeah, I can. I thought you had to use the super flat power to go in here and get to it. No. There are some parts we can't access. The, I I think there's like a uh, glitched double jump kind of thing. I don't know how you do it, but like people do that to um do some sequence breaking. Can he just fly over and hop to him? Probably. The lizard will probably just run away. I want plushies of these guys. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'm I've been doing. If you press uh, all the shoulder buttons, uh, Spox actually uses like a treasure finder ability, where like he just points to gems you haven't picked up yet, which can be helpful. You actually have to unlock that in Spyro Three, or use a cheat. Alright, where are you? No. Yeah. Ah. 
You can't turn that much on this. Nice. Um, where is he? Go? Yeah, where is he? Oh. He left without you. <laughs> Uh, that's the first level. This is pretty harmless. It t teaches you the main things you need to know about the game. And this should be the last one. Ah. Ah, uh, PS1 camera limitations. Yep. I'm keeping the rock. <laughs> Man. Yeah, we can just exit now. I think I can just... Uh... No, I can't just leave. Okay. But yeah, we ha we're going to have to go back. This game introduces backtracking, which... Um, I'm kind of mixed on, because of the way it's implement implemented, and it goes with why I'm not so keen on how getting uh, the super abilities work. So they can swim. <laughs> oh no! Oh hello. We didn't get a chance to introduce ourselves before. My name is Alora. I'm Spyro. What are you? Some kind of goat? I'm a fox, <laughs> dork. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did you meet the gem cutters and Glimmer? Yeah, they gave me a souvenir too. They called it a talisman. They gave you a talisman? What? Is it special? <laughs> I just stuck it oh, in the book you gave me. There are 14 talismans in Avalar, and they are all magical. If you can collect enough of them, they can be used to defeat Rick. Hunter, where have you been? Uh, I. Uh. Going to help us collect the talisman. I am? He is. Spyro, look. There's no way you can get to Dragon Shores right now. Ripto and his monsters have taken over the castle here in the Summer Forest. You're going to have to go to Avalar's world and convince the inhabitants to give you their talisman. You can keep them in your guidebook. Hey, I could do that. Why doesn't the dragon just torch Ripto? <laughs> Hunter. You can't even keep track of your running shoes. How can we trust you with 14 talismans? If you come across any orbs, they're important too. But I'll tell you about them later. Okay, no problem. I'll collect a few talismans, give Ripto the old hot foot, and be in Dragon Shores by lunchtime. Hunter asking all the right questions. Yeah. It's so like, um, I guess before I go into, um, the whole, like, backtracking thing, uh, what do you think about, like, the characters and all that in this game? They're charming. Yeah. Hunter's fun, but I guess he's, he gets fleshed out by Invert Year of the Dragon later. Yeah. I guess his, like, whole thing in this game is that he... Learns to trust Spyro or some or something. I don't know. The hunter's a fun character. Spyro, this is the homeworld called Summer Forest. There are portals to many of the Avalar worlds around here. Unfortunately, Ripto has taken over the castle, and we need your help. Start by retrieving the talismans from each of the worlds you go to. Yeah, so there's three there's three home worlds in, in this game, unlike the first game which had quite a lot. Um which may make you think that this game's a lot shorter than Spyro One, but it really isn't because uh the, this game has a lot more min it has a lot of like mini games and like 
other things you'd expect from a collector farm. Um, and the levels are generally a lot longer to go through, and there's a lot more levels in the home world than in the first game. Um, to a fault, honestly, because I feel like they, I feel like there should have been four home worlds instead of just three, because they had the whole season thing going on. So it's kind of weird they didn't have a spring one. Oops. Oh, whatever. Just telling us stuff we already know. Uh. Yeah, I don't have much to s uh, I, I don't have m many things wrong uh, to say about the home, home world, so they're fine little, um, uh, Exploration areas. You can just take a breather in. You look like you're pretty agile. Let's try putting it to a test. See if you can get up this first step. Press X and hold it down to get more hang time. Okay, not bad. Now to make this next jump, you'll have to glide. Press X to jump. Then press X again at the top of your jump to get the maximum glide distance. I usually skip these text. Uh, oh crap! <laughs> I usually skip the text in in these games, so you know. Pass by some gems. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm gonna have to go go back down. So. Remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now. Nice job. Now try to do a hover. Press X to jump. Then press X again to glide. Then when you reach the end of your glide, press triangle to hover. Hovering will give you extra height and distance. It's feature I'm s I failed to do apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I played Sparrow to be honest, so Wow. I feel like it's like a little bit of delay on this. They got rid of the side roll that Spyro used to have in this game, didn't they? Hmm? You know, a side roll that he had in the first game, they got rid of it, didn't they? Oh yeah, like, there was like a dodge roll thing. I don't, yeah, I don't think you can do that in this game. Why am I so bad? Oh, there we go. There we go. Wow, you're a pretty good athlete. If I hadn't lost my running shoes, I'd take you on for real. For now, here's an orb for your collection. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of like hunter missions. He's low key kind of like a rival, I guess, because like. I don't, I don't know. I don't really know any better way to describe him, but there's a lot of like challenges you do with Hunter in the game, or games, because he makes a big comeback in the third game too. Uh, do you have anything to say? You have just stuff we already know. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, we can't do that. Um. But yeah, uh, we have like two choices of levels we can go to now. We can go to um, Idle Springs, or the uh, the better option is Colossus because Idle Springs requires you to have the swimming ability to get some gems. 
and, a, and an orb or so. Uh, so if you want to reduce some backtracking, go here, get everything done so you can go back and pay money back so you can get swimming. And there's also like intro cutscenes and outros. Which is kind of nice, makes the game have some personality. <laughs> hey there. I guess he has some rooms paging around our home, but we've managed to trap him by shutting all the doors. If we talk to the other brothers, they will open the gates and guide you to him. Uh Right, I I'll I'll talk about the, the uh backtracking thing now. So um basically uh how this game works is that Sometimes you, you, you can go for a level um, and you won't have a specific ability you need uh, such as the swimming thing for example and you're gonna have to pay money bags later to get that ability so you can finish that level um, which is which sometimes you can bypass it but like doing something like this where you do another level before doing the one that requires swimming uh, but you can't always you're not always gonna be allowed to do that. Um, Uh, but um, yeah. The the uh, main reason I have an I have an issue with the way you get super abilities is, is because instead of the first game where enemies give you gems, they turn into spirit par particles that go into the uh, power gates, if you will, um, and and uh, you're and when when you uh, leave a stage and come back in, you're gonna have to kill the enemies again to activate the power gates. And sometimes you're gonna have to do that later on, um, when you have to play levels again. Uh, cause... Oh, what was it? Yeah, there's a lot of dialogue, so... <laughs> Uh, but like, later, yeah, like later, later on in the game, uh, there's stages where you're not going to be able to f get everything, but you have to play through it to the the, the main end of the stage to get the talisman because you need uh, those to be uh, get to the bosses. Yeah, pretty much what I was, pretty much what I was saying, um, and uh, yeah, because of the way the spirit particle particles work, uh, um, you can, you might might have to. Okay, let let me backtrack a little bit because this is getting a bit confusing. Um, okay, so to unlock the the power gates, you have to get the spirit particles, um, and. Um, do that you defeat the enemies. Yeah, to do that you have to defeat the enemies. Um and there's and you're gonna need those power power gates to do like certain missions or get certain gems or whatever. Um and sometimes uh some sometimes you're gonna have to um go through go through a the levels in a world, um, beat the boss, go to the next world and get a move that you need to get like those specific orbs or gems so then when you come back and the the enemies are uh, have like re respawned or whatever for lack of a better word um you're gonna have to kill those guys again to activate the power gates and i don't know i feel like there should have been an easier way to do it because like, it's not the end of the world um like the backtracking doesn't take too long uh, to do most of the time, but um, there's a couple pretty big offenders in World 2 um, that we'll get to eventually, and I don't know, I, ge I, I generally just don't feel like the spirit part particles are as satisfying as getting gems from the enemies, because uh, that was a plot point in the first game where um, the gems were actually like transformed into the into the norks yeah and that 
it makes sense that they're just they they just t turn into like something else now, but um, I don't know. It's just a general generally the fact that you have to replay stages sometimes. That is the issue. Yeah, we already know this. Uh, it, it's the main issue that you have to sometimes replay stages to kill the enemies again. Um, like if they if they didn't have that, then I wouldn't really have an issue. But it's mainly that that is the problem for me. And I don't know. It just it just feels feels kind of needless. Like I don't feel I don't feel like Sparrow is a is a series that really benefits from backtracking in any way. Um, like I don't know. Like I said, it could it could be a lot worse, but I don't think it's something the game really needed either. So. I like how the uh, text says torch and he clearly just said kill. <laughs> Alright, boss fight time. Okay, so he's got a stomping mechanic, alright. Oh. <laughs> oh man, I love that fake out. In before dogs appear. So is that a Yeti associated with Ripto? No idea. Uh, yeah, that, that's a, a good thing you brought that up though, uh, because yeah, my main my main issue with Ripto as a villain is that outside of the like cutscenes and uh, like okay, camera please, uh, and uh, just messing with the main cast of characters, he really doesn't do a lot in the game, like. Like, the characters rarely ever mention him, if ever, um, and it seems like the Avalar citizens are just kind of dealing with their own issues. Um, so I don't, I don't know, it, it feels like he doesn't have as much of a presence as he should, as he probably should as the main villain. Yeah, this is our first major mini game. But what yeah, about hockey is calming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the least calming. Well, not the least calming sport ever, but it's not wide cool calm. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I like Ripto as a character. He's very entertaining and he has good chemistry with the main cast. But no, he doesn't really do much. Like. He doesn't really have a presence in the stages. The again, the the uh, citizens of Avalar are kind of worrying about their own issues. Um, and I, I don't know. Like I feel like they they should have done more to make him more of a notable notable threat of like why we had to get rid of this guy because as it seems, he just seems to be walking around putting up banners. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think Nasty Nork and uh, the Sorceress in the first and third games, respectively, put made it more clear what the what the stakes are. what the stakes are. Yeah, and like why we had to get rid of them. And I guess even Ripto and Enter the Dragonfly. <laughs> yeah, that's a sad, that's a sad thing. Ripto and Enter the Dragonfly is b a better villain than <laughs> than him in this game, because like. He sends the dragonflies around the world. Um, you have to, and like he sends like his um, henchmen in the levels to try and stop you and stuff. Um, well, I, I guess to a, I guess it does help each world feel unique in their stories because it's not going on about Ripto, but yeah, that again, that's that's a problem of having a villain that doesn't feel very effective. All these times is just evicted like three people in their home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, N Nasty Nork set, uh, turned all the dragons into statues, uh, The and then he made, like, enemies out of some of the gems and stuff. Um, 
the the sorceress is like really diabolical, and I've already failed. <laughs> but I'll have. Wait, did I? Oh, that was my point. What am I doing? <laughs> oh wait, that one. I got confused. That was a mess. Uh. But yeah. Uh, one thing I'll 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 be quick about. Uh, the skill. There's also like skill points they added in this game. Uh, where you do like specific things, um, and you hear like this sound, and you get an extra life. And the if you get all the skill points in the game, you get a little bonus. Yeah, which is pretty. Yeah, that's nice. not really doesn't really have anything to do with 100% completion. It's just it's literally just a it's just gravy. <laughs> yeah, I do I do like the the little extra thing you get after getting them all though, because it's a nice little wrap up of the story. Oh. But yeah, I, I've been, yeah, so, um, I don't know, I, I've been kind of hog hogging the mic for a while, so what, what was your opinion on, like, Ripto, I guess? Um, I think he kind of, I think, I think he covered most of it, he's, he's serviceable. He's funnier than Nasty Nork. This is a game, I mean, this is a game, should, this is a series I probably shouldn't take itself too seriously, so. Yeah. Rip, Ripto fits the tone. Yeah. I mean, clearly people liked him because they kept on using him after. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a fun character. The main issue was just the fact that <laughs> he really didn't do much in this game. But, uh, yeah. Why does fire just melt the ice? Uh, well, then you'd probably have to s swim and that probably wouldn't work. Fire swim better than these slides, though. Yeah, the ice physics in this game aren't that great, because <laughs> you can't you can't jump when you're on ice at all. And uh, dang it, so we're gonna have to uh, retry, because we had to do this without the guy scoring once. Can I tell you I semi -pro before I join yep, yep. What is your opinion on ice hockey? It's hockey on ice. <laughs> I've never played actual, like, real hockey or ice hockey or anything like that. I played air hockey. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> Where is that guy? Unnecessary roughness, Harry. <laughs> like, he can, uh, do that to me. Hey, you do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, okay mini game. Again, ice visit. What is going on right now? That was weird. You can't, you can't eat it on neutral ground, I guess. That was kind of weird. But like, yeah, uh, mini game's okay. Not the best. Um, if you get any closer, he's going to smack you with that thing. Yeah. <laughs> it probably oh. would be better if there was like an overhead kind of camera. Um, so you can see more of what's, what's around you, where the other guy is. And but stuff. Harry, top down stuff is for old games. 3D is the future. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a thing though, like... Uh, a problem with a lot of this game's mini games, a, pro a lot of things problems with this game's mini games. Oh, screw Aww. you! With this game's mini games, is that a lot of them would be fixed if they just had an overhead camera, which is kind of uh, kind of crazy. Like a lot of there's a lot of mini games later on, which uh, we'll get to where it will become more obvious. This one's okay; it's not the worst. Yeah, it's doing this again. This looks really buggy. I don't think it's supposed to do that. Okay, I can eat on that one. Yeah, I, I don't mind. I don't mind the fact that they uh, have added mini games and stuff. There's more thing that gives it the player more things to do. Breaks up the monotony of Spiral One, certainly. Yeah. 
Um, some of these mini games just suck. Yeah, some of the mini games are pretty bad. Um, most of them are pretty harmless and easy, but there's some that are just badly done. <laughs> uh, yeah, please score in your own goal. <laughs> I don't want to be on this all day. This is the hypest invisible crowd ever. Yep. Oh my goodness. You almost scored in that. Yeah. And when you when you pass when you pass a hockey uh, park or whatever, it's just really annoying to get back to it, especially with this guy roaming around. One more. I just love hitting him right away like that. So we are going for all the skill points. Oh, of course. No, oh, okay, that was way too close. Nice. There you go. You get an extra life and that means you got it. I might need a reminder of some of the skill points because I might forget some. Yeah, we're done with this. 